Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, not at all, Mr. Dreiser. Tell Paul I said goodbye. I will. What are you sniffling about, Theodore? I'm not sniffling. Look here, son. I'm tired of having you mope around because Paul's going away to school. You should be happy that your brother's going to be a minister. I am happy. Paul, you better put that banjo away. Please, Paul, it's your father. Carrie, off the bed. Paul, look, Pa's got your new suit. It's oh. nothing to get so excited about, Theodore. Well, thanks for picking it up for me. You have more than that to thank me for. This isn't the suit I picked out. Of course it isn't. This is your old suit, the one that you tore. Look, there's a patch. There was no reason why you should pay $12 for a suit when this one could be so easily altered. But it was my $12. I earned it. Paul, I've always tried to impress upon you the necessity for thrift. The sooner you learn frugality, the less difficulty you'll have later. Learn it? That's all I know or ever heard. Maybe I'd better learn something besides it. You might as well realize that as a minister, you'll always be a poor man. I'm not so sure I want to be one. What? I want to be a musician. I've always wanted to be a musician. We settled that nonsense long ago. I told you at the time I didn't want to hear it again, and I won't listen to it now. Well, maybe you'll have to. Paul, please. Everything's settled. You're going to theological school tomorrow, and you're going in that suit. Gary, Theodore. The way it's mended, no one would ever notice it was torn. I'll know it. <laughs> I don't see what difference that makes, as, as long as nobody else does. makes a lot of difference.
Did you come to say goodbye to me? How did you know I was going? I knew it this afternoon, the way you faced up to it. Well, I would have told him then, except for you. I thought it would be best if I slipped out this way. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Well, there's nothing else I can do. Will you, will you let me know where you are, Paul? As soon as I know myself. be no confusion at the outset. None of this exquisite jewelry is for sale. So please don't embarrass me by attempting to purchase it. It will soon appear in your local stores. We are merely introducing it tonight. I want you to examine this jewelry thoroughly and observe for yourself that it is all 24 karat gold. I'd like to see it, mister. Delighted, my good man, delighted. Naturally, I'll have to ask you for a $10 deposit while you examine it. Just a gesture of good faith, my friends, inasmuch as each cloth contains $100 worth of jewelry. Your deposit will be returned when you finish your perusal. Thank you, sir. I'd Thank like you. to see that one. Very good, Let madam. Very good. Oh, Very good. Have you ever seen such brilliance, such delicate design, such luster? Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The ideal Christmas gift. The ideal wedding or graduation gift. And remember, my friends, it is not for sale now at any price. Now examine this jewelry to your heart's content. And while Mr. Dresser entertains you with one of his new compositions, aside, and the gentleman will understand, uh, <coughs> soothe my throat. <laughs> Double whiskey and chaser, please. I'll be back in a moment. Yes, sir. Oh, the winter am a place, and the days am cold and drear. Still I love you, I love you, Liza Jane. Watermelons out of season, and the possums mighty dear. Still I love you, I love you, Liza Jane. Oh, I want you for my honey. Yes, I want you by and by. For I love you. I love you, Liza Jane. Oh, the turkey am a winging and the chickens roosting high. Still, I love you. I love you, Liza Jane. Liza, Liza, Liza Jane. I love you, my little Liza Jane. When the springtime am a coming. And the bees, they am a humming. As your honey, if you want me, Liza Jane. Hey, this ain't nothing but brass. I put vinegar on it and it turned black. What? <laughs> Today, that's the truth. We'll tar and feather you. Yeah. Yeah.
the rest of them. How did I get here? Mostly luck. Found you alongside the road. First, we thought you were a turkey. Everybody was terribly disappointed when they found we couldn't meet you. If you feel strong enough, I'll help you into my wagon. I'll be all right. I... You've done enough for me already. I want you to live. Come on, I'll help you. Put your arm around my neck. Put your arm around my neck. concocted this pharmacy for you. Should I did. Murphy, you have deviated from my usual formula. Make it sweet. Always make it plenty sweet so the babies will cry for it. Add uh, 50 or 60 pounds more sugar and uh, mm, might put in a couple of gallons of peppermint. All right, more peppermint. That's the asthma cure the Colonel's making now. For rheumatism, they leave out the sugar. Collins. I feel kind of sore. My skin hurts. Oh. oh, you'll be all right. I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you've done for me. Oh, forget it. Who can tell? I may need you to take the tar off me someday. Oh, I'd like to. I mean, I, I'd like to be able to do something for you in return. Why, well, I, I brought some clothes for you. An old suit of the Colonel's. Well, I can't take them. I, I don't know whether I'll be able to return them or not. I think that'll be pretty easy. I got him to give you a job, too. Well, he hasn't even heard me play. How does he know whether I'm any good or not? That doesn't matter. If you're not a good musician, you can always pound steaks. Gosh, I, I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you. Don't you? <laughs> Bashful, aren't you? No, of course not. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Sure, I like you. I, haven't you ever kissed a girl before? Sure, sure. It's, it's just that I... Well, I didn't want you to think I was fresh, that's all. Well? Do you feel better now? <laughs> I sure do. three you've bought this month. Oh, those others were just to wear. This came from Chicago. It's a big city cut, all right. Yep. All I sent was my measurements and the money. They came back like this. Those gents are my tailors from now on. Uh-oh. Better hook me up. The Colonel's almost to his death soon. <laughs> you watch my act last night, mate? I watch you every night. <laughs> well, don't miss my act tonight. I'm going to try out a new novelty. Well, the Colonel's just before dying. I'm almost on. <laughs> you know, if this stunt goes over, I'm going to hit the Colonel for a raise. That chance you have of getting it. Oh, if I don't, I'll start my own show. All you need's an Indian, a couple of recipes. I was told that one day I... 
There it is. My time has come, folks. But don't, don't weep for me. Don't feel badly. I've had a good life, a happy life. So goodbye, friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Step aside! I need no assistance. Oh, friends, amazing, amazing, marvelous. You have seen this miracle performed before your very eyes. That was due to the Kickapoo Indian Remedy Medicine. It cures everything. Rheumatism, consumption, yellow fever, black fever, scarlet fever, measles, bruise, cuts, scars, dandruff. Here it is, folks, one dollar a bottle. My red friends will pass amongst you and sell this wonderful product for a dollar a bottle. Remember, folks, one dollar a bottle. One dollar a bottle, buy while you have the opportunity. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be entertained by Mr. Paul Dresser, that great artist, that wonderful piano virtuoso, who has just closed a very successful engagement in Chicago, the Queen City of the West, Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to introduce Mr. Paul Dresser. Paul Dresser. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't seem to remember Mr. Dresser built in Chicago while we were playing there. We never got down to the stockyards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, rather than to play anything heavy, I thought I would play something in a lighter vein tonight. A little composition of my own, as yet untitled. Did we missed him in Chicago? Not in that suit. <laughs> But he's going to make trouble. No. Stay here. I wouldn't miss this for anything. Look, if you
you don't like my act, why don't you get out of here? Like it? Why, you're the hit of the show. It's one of the funniest acts I ever saw. Funny? What's funny about it? Wasn't it? Well, you know very well it wasn't. Nobody else was laughing. But those two pianos and that suit. What could you expect? What's wrong with my suit? It's all right if you can stand the noise. <laughs> Mr. Dresser, will you kindly retire to your tent? Folks, I'm very sorry if you don't like my little entertainment. Oh, I'm sorry, too. We didn't mean to start anything. Here, give that young man this pass with our compliments. Just to show him there are no hard feelings, we'd like to have him come downtown to our show tomorrow. Ooh, you're in the profession, too. Oh, yes, we're trying out for Elliot's new play at the Buffalo. Well... And, uh, by the way, you better take this. I don't happen to have any of the ailments you listed. Keep it, my boy, keep it. You'll find it makes a splendid cleaning fluid. <laughs> 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 Oh, the gay white way Invite your girlie to the gay white way It's always early for the lights are glowing Wine is flowing There's you a lot of Romeoing On the gay white way It's so nice Birds to day And every little miss Like a little mystery from the gay The toast of the town in my Paris gown A little naughty but nice If I seem rather gay, little girls, they say I'm made of sugar and spice I'm the type of good time, Charlie's And stays the sea I'm the toast of the town But I hope to settle down with some if you're after love and laughter while you're young and free, come along with me, come along and see. There's a lot of cares on the gay white way. Invite your girly to the gay white way. It's always early for the lights are glowing. A little mischief on the game. Every little miss would like a little mischief on the game, my way.
Madison show. Pill is out there breaking up the performance. Now, darling, don't get in a tempo. Oh, it's your fault. You had to go and give him pass. <laughs> You're the trick suit. Out. Are you still angry with me? No. Just thinking. What about Paul? I gotta get out of here, May. Get out of here? I can't spend my whole life in this medicine show. I thought it was great stuff till today. Sitting in that red wagon, playing the piano, it was wonderful. Then tonight we saw a real show. All of a sudden, it hit me how cheap this is. Just like this suit I'm wearing. Yesterday, I thought it was wonderful, too. It is. No, it isn't. It's a hick suit, loud and cheap, just like this show. I've got lots to learn, May, and I can't learn it in these tank towns. I'm going to New York. I'll go along with you. No, I got to go by myself. Paul. You can't just run out on me. You've been good to me, May. You got me a job when I needed it, and you made me grow up. But I gotta go now alone. I know what it is. It's that girl. No, it isn't. I hate her. But nobody's gonna laugh at me, not her or anybody. Someday I'll write a song. She'll come begging to sing it. Then I'll do a little laughing myself. But you can't. You can't just run out. Besides, you spent all your money on those clothes. How are you going to get there? I'll get there all right. Even if I have to walk. Skidoo. What do you mean, Skidoo? Three oh, years I've been coming in here. I don't I never go anywhere. Hello, Mac. Uh, hello, Charlie. How are you? Fine, thanks. How's the penny business? Oh, we're going to do a nice business over there. You are? Yeah, things well, are coming along. Well, you are. Uh, say, listen, I got a new one for you. You want to hear it? Sure. little thing called Come Tell Me. Brand new. Nice little tune in it. How do you happen to be playing it? I'm just torturing myself, wishing I had the rights to publish it. I've got the rights. I wrote it. Somebody stole it from me. Look, every time a hit tune comes out, 50 guys claim they wrote it. Sally Elliott wrote this. It's the hit tune in her new show. Sally Elliott? That proves it. She heard me play it. You're gonna get out of here while I call a cop. Sally Elliott doesn't have to steal people's songs. 
She's too important a star for that. Oh, she is, is she? Well, wait a minute until I show you this. Here. You can read music, can't you? Can I read? McGinnis, can I read music? Can he read music? That's not my title, but it's my melody. How do I know you didn't hear this tune and write it down? Because I'm telling you I didn't. She heard me play that in Buffalo. Come to think of it, this tune wasn't in the original score. It was added after the show was brought into New York last week. Hey, maybe you've got something. McGinnis! Hey! McGinnis, what would you say if I told you that Sally Elliott didn't write Come Tell Me, but this guy did? I'd say we well, all better go out and get drunk after you sign him up. In addition to being a good printer and a very poor cook, McGinnis is a man of ideas. Obviously, my friend, you need guidance. Now, if you will sign right here, you'll have me handling your career. Not so fast. I'm not signing anything yet. Well, it's the usual form contract, that's all. Merely means that if you're telling the truth, I'll publish the song and you'll get the usual royalties. Now, if you're going to accuse Sally Elliott of stealing your song, you've got to have somebody behind you that knows the ropes. Otherwise, they'll laugh you right out of town. Give me that pen. Right there, mister. What'd you see your name with? Dresser. Paul Dresser. You can keep that one. Pat Howley's my name. Howley Publishing Company. Publishers of my gorgeous gingham girl. You know, we got out a thousand copies of that the first day. And we still got 990 of them. Ten of them swept the country. <laughs> McGinnis has such a sense of humor.
your song, just like you said. Well, sure I am. That's the ticket. Come on, let me hear this. You were delightful, darling. Nice number, Miss Elliot. Thank you. Oh, hello. This is Mr. Dresser, Miss Elliot. Yes, we've met. Oh, you remember me? After the way you ruined my show in Buffalo. How could I forget you? I thought you might. People usually do that take songs that don't belong to them. Are you accusing me of stealing your song? I didn't give it to you, lady. Now, let me handle this. This can be all worked out. That's a cheap insinuation. What could I expect from someone with your background? I don't know what your background is, but it certainly didn't keep you from stealing my song. Oh, please, let's calm down and talk this over like gentlemen. I've had all this kind of talk I want. Fred, will you tell this carnival entertainer what this is all about? Why? Mr. Haviland, if she's going to take that attitude, I'm afraid we'll be compelled to sue. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. You and Miss Elliot seem to have a remarkable talent for irritating each other. It'd be nice if you could approach her just once without breathing fire. She'd stop stealing my songs. I wouldn't approach her at all. Ah, but that's where you're wrong. The song is not stolen. We admit it's yours. If you'd taken the trouble to investigate, you'd find it isn't even published yet. Why, we've hunted all over for you to get your permission to do so. I'm afraid you'll have to talk to me about that. I hold the exclusive rights to all of Mr. Dresser's works. But not to Miss Elliot's, and she wrote the words. I don't need her words. I'll write them myself. Well, I'm sorry. If that's the way you feel about it, we'll take it out of the show at once. All right, take it out of the show. Please. No, we can do business. Well, let's not go off half-cocked just because we're mad at her. The song's a hit with her words in. Put some others in, it's liable not to go so good. Oh, that's ridiculous. The people like my music, not her words. Of course, your music is great, but you're an unknown. And it's a wonderful thing for an unknown to have a great star like Sally Elliott sing and introduce his song. You'll be made, established overnight. Now, after that, you can do anything you want. Maybe you're right. After I get started, I won't need her or anybody. Oh, yes, you're going to need me. If you'll take a look at that contract, you'll see I've got you signed up for life. It's a deal. Miss Elliott owns the words. Mr. Dresser owns the music, and I publish it. That seems to be satisfactory. And uh, <clears throat> if you'd like to get in on it, I'll, uh, I'll give you a half interest in our firm for $5,000. Very generous of you, considering you have a hit on your hands. I know. It just kills me to do it. But I'm afraid if I don't get somebody with cash, I'll have to print it on wrapping paper. <laughs> Guinness, how many times have I told you never to drink when you're on the job? Oh, I'd say about 10,000. What's all this? Why the celebration? For you, mademoiselle, I bake myself. This cake, no foreign hand touch him. <laughs> you may not know it, Sally, but this is a great occasion. One year ago tonight, I became your producer and your most devoted slave. Fred, you're a darling. You're a darling, too, Henri. Everybody's a darling. <laughs> Who belongs to I, uh, hope you won't be angry. Tonight? How could I be? Well, that's reassuring, because I invited Paul Dresser. After all, the two of you wrote the biggest hit in New York. There's no reason why you should go around glaring at each other. I have no objections. Except that the chair is a little close. Oh, why, he's a fine composer, and we certainly do need good music. Of course, he may not have time to drop in on us. I understand he's taken to personally closing all the saloons in town. Well, the heat of the limelight's made him a little thirsty. He's young and uh, still growing. Particularly his head. <laughs> well, do we drink to something, or do we just drink? <laughs> <laughs> a toast to the toast of New York. A girl who sparkles like champagne and takes the cake as soon as we finish the champagne. <laughs> you know, Sally, 
That candle isn't just to celebrate our first year together. It's a sort of a pale imitation of the bonfire in my heart. That's the second pretty speech you've made in one minute. Wait till you hear the third. If you make the right answer, it'll call for a much larger cake. You know how much I like cake? Good evening. Hello. Sorry to be late, old man, but I was playing the piano down at Pastors and just couldn't break away. Oh, hello, Miss Elliot. I'd like you folks to meet a good friend of mine. Miss Elliot, Mr. Sullivan. John L. Sullivan. Hello, John. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, you two know each other. The only time I was ever knocked out in my life was the first time I saw Sally dancing. <laughs> Bucko, let us sit down and get to drinking. Nice of you to ask me, Havlin. Oh. Somebody's birthday? No, it couldn't be. Only one candle on it. Oh, I get it. Say, this is nice. Look at the cake, champ. They're celebrating my first song hit. Come tell me. That's a great song. Put your arms around me, sweetheart. Give me your answer, yes or no. Well's champ being songwriter, this boy. We didn't know whether you'd enjoy just a, a little party like this. Oh, it's perfect. I wish I'd known you all were going to dress up. Oh, it doesn't matter at all. I think your suit is stunning. Well, thanks. It's a lot different from the one I was wearing when we first met. You know, uh, you were right. I, it was loud. <laughs> well, we all have to learn someplace. But it didn't take you long to get on to New York. Oh, New York isn't difficult for a fellow who can play the piano and doesn't mind buying a... You've done it all on one song. There's no telling where you'll go if you ever write another one. Well, I've already written it. I wrote it in a board down on Front Street. Here, I'll play it for you. Where are you going, Buck? I'll play my new song here. You are. Let me have the piano. Quiet, everybody. No talking. Dresser's written another hit. He's going to play it for us. You were putting it on rather thick, Sally. I was afraid he might catch on. Not when you're talking about him. He'll believe anything about himself as long as it's favorable. <laughs> Wait a minute, Bucko. Hey, you. You at the far table. Let us have quiet over there. That's John L. Sullivan. Oh. <laughs> well, it can't hurt us to listen. It can hurt us not to listen. <laughs> oh. oh, that's catchy. to this one myself.
back now. <laughs> if it's delightful. It's a lot better than come tell me. You know, when I hear you sing, I, I just can't be mad at you. I feel a little bit that way when you play. Well, in that case, I suggest that we uh, be friendly from now on. Very well. A truth. That isn't what I meant, but uh, we'll talk about it on the way home. But I came here with Fred. You're going home with me. How wrong you are. I think Howley and Havilon have another hit in their hands. You know, we can probably use this number in the show, too, if we take Lazy Day out of it. I'm tired of that number anyway. The pity of it all. That's a smart tune. This boy has really gone places. Bucko, that's a smart tune. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Well, this is most inconsiderate. Cost and Beals want me to go out to the lighthouse and catch a special act. Will you go with me, dear? Oh, I, I don't think we should both leave, Fred. You go on. All right, I'll pick you up later. All right, dear. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night, Good night, Fred. Good night, Dresser. Good night. Oh, uh, sorry you have to go. Uh, it can't be helped. I'll talk to you about that number tomorrow. Fine. Shall we go now? Of course not. Well, uh, let me know when you're ready. Keep the change. Are you going to walk home? On the clouds, I hope. Say, this is nice. You know, they... ...compare with this. Thanks. I didn't build it, but I appreciate the compliment. Good night, Mr. Dresser. I'll see you in. Say, I like this. It's got style. Thanks again for bringing me home. Good night. What? Well, look, I, I'd uh, like to look around a little more. If you're referring to the inside of my suite, I'll give a party sometime and have you over. Oh, you don't need to go to all that trouble. I'll uh, look around now. I said good night, Mr. Dresser. You know, I don't get it. You saw me get rid of Fred with that trumped-up message. You didn't say anything. You wanted to come with me. Why the uh, sudden change? I've just discovered I was intrigued by your music. I'll get it, Ida. Good morning, Miss Elliot. Are you still here, or did you come back? I'm a neighbor of yours now. You see, last night when I went home, I... I couldn't sleep from thinking of this place. I didn't want to get insomnia, so I uh, took a suite across the hall this morning. How nice. Ah, a piano. You know, I was hoping you had one. I don't uh, have one myself yet. But uh, there's a new tune that keeps running through my mind. I'd like to get it set before I forget it. I thought you did most of your composing in saloons. Well, it all depends where I get my inspiration. Last night, I, uh, got it here. Oh, no. Of course not. Thank you. Go on with whatever you were doing. You won't bother me a bit. I'm sure I won't. I was just on my way to rehearsal. If you want anything, just ring for the maid. Did you ring, sir? Won't you come up? I think I'd better go home and change, darling, but I'll see you at seven. All right, Fred, at seven.
think I've really got it. Do you like it? It's lovely. At four o'clock, I knew I had it. So I uh, took the liberty of ordering a little spread for us. A sort of celebration, you know? I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Why should I mind? <laughs> As an old tenant here, I want you to feel perfectly at home. taken the liberty of giving her the evening off. You take a lot of liberties, don't you? Yes. This is one too many. Well, we can cancel the others. This is the only important one. They tell me a lot of times people start out hating each other and end up this way. I, I wish you'd go. I have to get dressed. I have to go to the theater. Oh, you have an hour before you go to the theater. Places, places everywhere. 
Music lovers, wait. Listen, Gresser wrote another song last night. Here you are. Oh, it's simply great. If I keeps on writing songs, I'll have to get more help around here. Oh, now you can handle it. I'll have a keg of lager sent in. That's an idea. For you, mademoiselle, I bake myself. This cake, no foreign ham touching. That's come tell me. That's the pity of it all. And that's here you are. I wanted to have a party for each song when it came out. When you write two at once, what can I do? At this rate, it won't be long before we'll have to have a bigger cake. And you know how much Sally likes cake. <laughs> Tells me he's going to take a vacation, probably in Saratoga. McGinnis has got a cold. Maybe he better go to Saratoga. I know where he is, and so do you too. He isn't fooling ourselves. Ever since society took him up, he didn't have any time for common clay like us. Queer thing about geniuses. You always hear of them burning in an attic. But you always see them burning in the brightest places in town. No matter what you think, he's just as serious about his work as he ever was. Why, it's an idea about his home on the banks of the Wabash. Banks of the Wabash. Farm stuff. Who cares anything about farms? Who ever heard of the Wabash? But if it's a good tune, we might change it to the Hudson. Here comes the genius. <laughs> Well, how are you, George? Fine, thank you. Oh, uh, Callis, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Certainly. <laughs> Sorry to be late, Sal, but uh, I didn't realize time was passing so fast. Mariana, I'd like you to meet uh, Miss Elliot. Miss Elliot, Callis Rossini. How do you do, Miss Elliot? I've enjoyed your performances so very much. I've heard a great deal about yours, too, Countess. And uh, my uh, publisher, Mr. Haviland, and uh, Mr. Howley. How do you do? Hi. Oh, uh, I uh, brought some friends of mine along. I hope you don't mind, Sal. Look, uh, do you mind if we move the cake over to a bigger table? Don't bother. I was just leaving. Now, look, Sal, I know you've been waiting. I'm sorry. This so is the last cake you'll get from me. The next one you'll get in your face. Sally, I... And as for the candles, you can burn them at your wake, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, appointment. <laughs> Look, Pat. <laughs> Darling, I thought you said we were going to meet some friends of yours. <laughs> striking, very striking. It's a pleasure to make clothes for someone with a figure like yours, Mr. Dresser. Just a moment. Errant thread. Well, Sally. Hello, Paul. Well, this is a surprise, but a nice one. Come on in. Busy? Oh, I'm just trying on a few suits, so. You mind if I finish? Miss Elliot, Mr. Jansen. How do you do? Handsome, 
It's the nicest suit I ever saw on you, Paul. Oh, come on in here. I'll show you some others. I'm awfully sorry I lost my temper, Paul. I kept waiting for you to knock on my door so I could tell you. But you didn't. So I knocked on yours. Well, I, I would have been over long ago, but I didn't want a cake in my face. <laughs> come on. I threw away all my old ones and just turned Jansen loose. Do you get a better price when you order them by the dozen? Oh, when you have a tailor like Jansen, you don't discuss price. All the best people go to him. You mean like the Countess's husband? I believe that takes care of everything, Mr. Dresser. If you let me have that coat, I'll take it to the shop and get it back in plenty of time for you to pack. Thank you, Jansen. I hope you have a very pleasant trip, Mr. Dresser. Goodbye, Miss Elliot. Oh, well, I... Thank you. Bye-bye. I didn't know you were going away. Well, if we'd been speaking, I would have told you. How long will you be gone? Oh, just a short while. I'm going to Cuba. That'll be nice. Oh, what about the song, the Wabash song? We were going to use it in the show, you know. But I, I don't seem to be able to work around here anymore. I, I need a change. Plenty of time just for work. Now, look, sir, will you excuse me while I jump in the tub? Oh, I think I'd better run along. No, don't go. I'll only be a minute. Mr. Dresser, may I see him, please? He's busy right now. But I have a message from the Countess Rossini. I'll give it to him. It is confidential. <laughs> well, I'm his confidential secretary. He keeps nothing from me. The message is this. The Countess will meet Mr. Dresser and the party on the boat. Oh. She will, will she? Yes. The Count came home last night. You will be sure you will not forget? Never. Not if I live to be 90. Sorry to have kept you. Sally! Is she here? No, sir. She's gone. Oh, where is she? She's been gone some time oh. ago. Is anything wrong, Mr. Dressel? Man, what you doing? Uh, you'll see. Man, you're crazy. Uh, you bet I am. Must have cost at least sixty-nine dollars. There he is, stock staring insane. 
Now, come along quietly, me lad, and I won't have to split your head. Mind your own business. This has nothing to do with you. All right, it's your skull. What you in for, brother? Oh, I'm Jack the Ripper. Sunshine. He seemed to sing of the clouds. He seemed to sing of prosperity and the farmers. He seemed to sing of freedom in the sky near the sun's bright rays. And as he brought to his heart. <laughs> Still a sort of on probation, Mr. Dresser. You can't come out until you write a song called, uh, a song called Banks of the Wabash. Any particular key you'd like for me to write it in? Well, I, I don't know about that. Just so it's something Miss Elliot can sing. She fixed this with the judge. Oh, judge is a conniver. No, a Democrat. <laughs> My Indiana homestead wave the cornfields. In the distance loom the woodlands clear and cool. Oftentimes my thoughts revert to scenes of childhood. Where I first received my lessons, nature's school. But one thing there is missing in the picture Without her face it seems so incomplete I long to see my mother in the doorway As she stood Child. 
in the box asked me to give you this. Thanks. Tell the lady I'm sorry, but uh, I already have an engagement. Yes, Mr. Presser. You know, that was Audie's best cake. I'm still a little worried because we didn't blow out that last candle. What are you worrying about? Bad luck? Well... Not... People love songs about rivers. It's going over great. I'll drive you all home. Sparking on it. <laughs> How about it, honey? Oh, it'll be fun. Thanks, just the same, Fred. You're welcome. Bye, Pat. Oh, conductor, you got room for two more? <laughs> Fred, nice fellas like us never get anywhere with women. It's always the hounds that get the gravy. Go ahead, Wilson. We'll walk.
Looks like we're here for the night. Madam, this uh, gives me an opportunity to get something off my chest that's been there for a long time. Darling. That's thanks for keeping me from going to Cuba. You don't need to thank me. I did it in self-defense. You know, this is the sort of thing men give women when they have a guilty conscience. What have you been up to? Nothing. Cross my heart and hope to be dashed to the ground and broken into a million pieces if I'm not telling the truth. It seems you're on pretty thin ice. <laughs> he knows something. Maybe they saw the Countess in the box tonight, too. Oh, I, I know she was there. She even invited me to a party. But I turned her down flat. From now on in, the Countess and I are through. <laughs> what are you trying for? A duchess? No, no Countesses, no duchesses, no one else's, just you. I'd like to believe that. I wish I could. To show you how much I mean it. Will you marry me, Sal? Paul. When? When the show closes? Uh-uh. Saturday night. Then we'll have all day Sunday for our honeymoon. A whole day. What more could a girl ask for? Then Monday morning, like any other human being, I'll go to work. Sal, I'm going to write a complete score for a musical comedy. Why should I stop at just single numbers? I'll get Bill Hewitt to write the book, and we'll write the greatest hit you were ever in. Paul. Happy, darling? Happy? That isn't the word for it. Good night, Mr. Dresser, sweetheart. Good night. You know, that's what people say when they're leaving each other for the evening. Well, who's leaving? You are. Kiss me good night, darling. I'll be hanged if I will. Shh. Well, I wouldn't have asked you to marry me if I thought you were going to act like this. You'll never get out of it now. Pleasant dreams. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Morning, Wilson. Good morning, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Dresser. These gentlemen, sir. Mr. Dresser? Yes? I'm Monsieur de Rochemont, and this is Monsieur Garnier. We represent Count Rossini. Represent? Lawyers? Seconds. Seconds? You know, I, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. In regard to a certain matter pertaining to the Count's household, the Count demands satisfaction. Oh, you mean the Count's worried about his wife? Well, tell him not to be worried any longer. My, uh, Friendship with her is a thing of the past. The Count intends to make certain of it. <clears throat> I trust these weapons will meet with your satisfaction. See here, this is ridiculous. The whole thing is absolutely absurd. I, I don't know anything about pistols. Perhaps Monsieur Dresser would prefer rapiers? Oh, the choice is up to you. Uh, would you prefer rapiers? Look, I'd prefer not to do any fighting at all. There's nothing to fight about. The Count thinks otherwise. He's waiting for you now. Look, I don't intend making a fool of myself. I'm not going with you, and I'm not fighting any duels. Mr. Dresser! I shall inform the Count that he has challenged a coward. Look, you're not going to inform the Count anything. I'll do it myself. Now, get going. After you, sir. <clears throat> Just a second. I accept my apology for the long ride, monsieur, but here we are. Look, I want you to get this through your head. If there's any fighting to be done, it'll be with my fist. And uh, after I get through with the Count, I'll... Darling, before you're killed, we're going to fill you with champagne. 
Say, what is this? Come on. Which one's the count? Oh, the count is in Saratoga, trying to cure his gout. That much of the story was true. <laughs> well, I must admit, I was a little bit scared. Oh, you're not out of the woods yet. Unless you play Banks of the Warbush for us, you will have to fight a duel. <laughs> <laughs> Back the color in your cheeks. Darling, are you angry with me? No, I had a very good reason for not accepting your invitation. That can only mean one thing. I'm getting married Saturday to Sally Elliott. <laughs> What's so tragic about that? Are you going to stop leaving? I think everyone should be married. I am. Here is to marriage. This marriage is going to be a little different. This marriage is going to be complete and permanent. Permanent? Permanent is a long time. Darling, if you're going to do anything as drastic as that, I think you should celebrate between now and Saturday. More wine? Well, I can't stay until Saturday, but uh, I don't think there's any harm in a, another drink. Bed. Oh, good morning, darling. You sure Paul won't go to rehearsal with us? We didn't get home until after two o'clock. I imagine he's still asleep. <laughs> Darling, what shall it be? Pistols or rapiers? Champagne. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing me home. You're welcome. It was so nice. I think I shall challenge you again. Home, Pierre. Good morning, Sally. Oh, Sal. Oh, wait a minute. It won't take that long. I can tell you what I think of you in 10 seconds. You're a cheap, lying, scheming, contemptible. I'm through with you. Look, Sal, if you let me explain, I can tell you how it all happened. Oh, I know how it happened. I don't need a diagram. And I don't need this either. But, Sal, look, I... Excuse me, Dresser. The theater, please. Sal, look, this isn't what it seems to be. Look, will you... Sal, please listen to me, will you? Will you let me try to explain? Sal! town for a while. How'd you like to go on tour? Oh, Fred, could we? A long way from town. I have to buy Custer and Beals off, but it's worth it. Don't you ever get tired of picking me up after I'm knocked out? One of these days, I'm going to pick you up and keep you for myself. Me and the fella have a big umbrella 
so if rain starts to patter from above, we're alone in our own. You'll see me and my fella and the big umbrella on the bridge on a Sunday afternoon. There in the sun, we can hug and kiss, and we don't even miss the moon. Me and my fella have a big umbrella, so if rain starts to fall on the ball, we'll be alone, all alone, in our own. Dreaming by the blue Atlantic, here you and I can be a bit romantic and about as happy as a pair of birdies sitting in a tree. Yes, indeed, it would be dandy to enjoy a Sunday where it's rather sandy, but a pretty lady needn't be afraid to show a pretty limb. Even if it's cloudy weather, we could have an awful lot of fun together. And of course, if we could think of nothing better, we could even swim. <laughs> I'd like you to hear. I just got them from New York. Can you listen? Sure, I'll listen. Swell. This is a great novelty song. Got no mush in it. Doesn't mention moon, doesn't mention June, doesn't mention spoon. Ain't much of a tune either. <laughs> I think you'll like it, though. You don't belong to the regulars. You're just a volunteer. You're only one of the rank and file, but someone holds you dear. Many a mother's heart will ache and in the coming year. Uncle Sam will take off his hat to you, Mr. Volunteer. Say, you don't belong to the regulars. You're just a... Stinks, doesn't it? I don't like that one. It's not my type. Whose type is it? You know it's no good. I know it's no good. But if I admit it, I get fired. First flop dresser ever had. Did he write that? Yeah. But I got a little love song I think you like. You know, Cottage Small by a Waterfall for two sort of a thing. You like it. I don't want to hear any love songs either. Oh, but you love this love song. You ain't against love, are you? All right, Wiley, let it go for tonight, Yeah, but she you? can't be against love. Oh, I see. Okay, catch you later, Miss Elliot. Pardon me. Good night, Miss Elliot. I'm glad he had a flop. He's had one coming to him for a long time. 
In fact, I hope he has 50 flops. Now that you brought the subject up, I'm inclined to agree with you. I hope he has 100. Let's pool them. Between us, that'll give him 150 flops. And if you count that countless, it'll give him 150... Darling, we go out and have supper, huh? I must see him. I'm sorry, sir. I have my orders. Mr. Dresser hasn't seen anybody in over three weeks. Not even the Countess Rossini? Not even anybody. But I... I bear a message from his mother. I'm going to have to break it to him. Is it bad news, sir? I'm afraid so. Well, uh, in that case, I guess you'd better go up. Thank you. Oh, uh, is she ill, sir? No, she dropped a stitch in her embroidery. What? Hey, you! There's a madman coming up the stairs. I mean mad. I left instructions. I didn't want to be disturbed, Pat. I did that because I didn't want to be disturbed. I don't blame you for holding up not wanting to see anybody. I haven't wanted to see anybody either ever since we published Volunteer. But now you've had your drunk, you've had your cry. It's time to buckle down and go to work again. Look, I've forgotten all about Volunteer, and I have been working. There, take a look at that. That's almost all of a complete score I've been writing. Pretty heavy. Sure it isn't an opera? You're just weak. That's the lightest, gayest musical number you ever heard. Light, huh? Gay. Maybe it does you good to have your heart broken. Maybe you ought to have it broken every week. We'd be rich. Oh, by the way, I see the clipper says that Sally is knocking him dead in San Francisco. Is she? You and Sally ought to get back together. You need each other. I don't need her, and she evidently doesn't need me. So that makes us even. But her picture looked awful good on the front of our songs. You're a romantic soul, Pat. I see why you want us back together again. That uh, picture on the cover sold a few more copies, huh? That is definitely it. But at the same time, I wouldn't object to having you happy again. And I wouldn't object to you getting out of here so I can go back to work. Very well, Mr. Dresser, I'll go. I'll take this with me, and I hope I don't like it. What do you mean? I've never been right about a hit yet. It's a wonderful house tonight. You could stay in San Francisco forever. Maybe I will. I like the town. Wiley's got some new numbers he wants me to hear. You ready? Mm-hmm. Good evening, Miss Elliot. Hi, Ed. Have I got something delicious, delightful. I'm sorry, Wiley. Miss Elliot doesn't feel like listening to any numbers. Well, neither do I, but it's my job. Oh, you've just got to hear this. You'll love this. Please. You're so anxious, you must have written it yourself. Me? I hate music. They called her River Sal, a peculiar sort of a gal. With a heart that was metal And all-round good fellow Was my old pal Like? Uh-huh. That would be great for you, Sal. The words fit like a glove. Well, it's terrific. Even I like it. And, Miss Elliot, you'll scoop the whole country. Why, it's not published yet. I got it hot from the composer's quill. Who wrote it? Uh, some southern composer. From the South. His name is uh, Fletcher Hastings, or Hastings Fletcher. I don't know. It's not written here. What else has he done? W what else has he... Did? Oh, well, he wrote a jiggy little thing called the Southern Moon. Or was it Moon of the South? I'm not sure. And then there was another one called uh, Corn Pond Shuffle. You know, this number's just right. Why couldn't we make a production number out of it? What do you think, Wiley? What do you think I played it for? Miss Elliot? If this isn't the biggest hit you've ever had, I'll quit my job. Gosh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Bing. Sentimentally and incidentally.
incidentally, you sing like birds. But I didn't understand the word. Is that me? A peculiar sort of a gal. Oh, could be. With a heart that was now. An all-round good fellow was my old pal. Do you mean I've been fed? Followed and cared. Do you mean always willing to share? A wild sort of gal. Thanks for getting the number for me. Oh, by the way, the composer's in town. In fact, he's in your dressing room right now. He was too nervous to come out. <laughs> I'll go in and see him. Oh, uh, his name is uh, uh, Fletcher Hastings, isn't it? No, no, I was wrong. It's Fitch. Oh, yeah, Fitch. Fitch. Wait, either. Maybe it was Montgomery. What does this mean? What are you doing in San Francisco? Oh, nothing can keep me away when Pat told me you were going to sing my number. Your number? Yeah, and you did it beautifully. So you wrote it? Well, if I'd known that, I never would have sung a note of it. It would have stuck in my throat. I don't get it. Why did you beg to sing my number if you didn't want it? Beg for it? Why, somebody told me a long story about writing it in the middle of a cotton field. Oh, I see. Pat playing Cupid. Get out of here and take this cake with you. Well, that's for you. I brought it all the way from New York. It's a little stale, but the sentiment's awfully pretty. Get out of here. Mm -mm. Oh. oh, you know, you're still as unreasonable and hot as Irish as you ever were. I'm not coming 3,000 miles to be pushed away by you, you know? No, 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 no. All I had to do was get together and talk it out reasonably. 